are coming from. So in 2006, the net flow wasn't that big, but when you look at the actual inflow and outflow, you had 97,000 plus households moving into LA County and 145,000 moving out of LA County. So that's a lot of uh, property being impacted. The five biggest feeders into LA County are the usual suspects, Orange, San Bernardino, San Diego, Riverside, and Ventura. But as I mentioned earlier, this report uh, uses uh, national, uh, national figures uh, to kind of show you hot spots from around um, the country. One of the surveys that we do, we do a lot of research at CAR, and one of our oldies but goodies is actually a print snail mail survey. <laughs> and the reason we still do it that way is it asks you about your last closed transaction. So the way to interpret these numbers is as follows. Snapshot in time, June of every year. So in June of last year, we're actually going in the field uh, with the survey again as we speak. But in June of last year, the median price a discount list to sale was seven and a half percent. A few years earlier, it had been two. Um, median weeks, I'm sorry, it had been zero. Median weeks on the MLS, 8.6. A couple of years ago, it was two. 80% of the homes sold last year sold at a discount. So again, if a seller is interested in moving their home quickly, they need to be looking at this data. The message is more aggressive on lowering that price initially and getting it going. And I forgot to mention one of the benefits of looking at that foreclosure radar information is if you're talking to a seller on a street where there are some properties in pre-foreclosure, you can kind of say, look, maybe we want to be a little bit more aggressive out the gate, so three months from now or six months from now, we're not competing with four or five other similar properties. So it gives you a lot more transparency in terms of that, um, in terms of those strategies. So anyway, more properties sold at a discount. Um, the trade-up market was hammered because of loss of equity in 2005. The median amount of cash that a seller had at the close of escrow was $220,000. Last year it was 100,000. And not only that, 22.2% of the sellers were at a loss after the close of escrow. They lost money underwater. Um, here's maybe the most chilling slide of all. In, in 2006, 40% of you working with a first time buyer, we asked, Repeat or first time? First time, 40% of you said that first time buyer did not put any money down. And that really is you know, one of the key takeaways that I've had over the last, looking at the last couple of years. And that is, if you don't have equity in your home, you're not a home owner. And what I mean by that is, you don't behave like a homeowner. And there's been a lot of, um, criticism of the rating agencies, and I think a lot of it is well-founded. Um, but the issue was also the results are only as good as the data that you put in, and they were looking at 40 plus years of post-World War II data where people did have skin in the game and they treated their mortgage differently, right? There have always been subprime borrowers. There always will be, but it used to be back in the day that if you were a subprime borrower, that's somebody with really poor credit or no credit at all, you could get a loan, but you had to put more money down, right? Your down payment is 30%, not 20%. So in a way, I think what's happening is to a certain extent, we're going back to the future um, with financing. And my personal take on it is I think that's a good thing. I don't think we want people to be playing roulette uh, with their houses as, as, has, uh, as has happened um, in the last couple of years. So here's a look at um, the percentage of total loans outstanding um, and the percent that were subprime. And up until to the end of 2003, it wasn't a big part of the market. But as things took off and there was cheap money available, people took advantage of it and may have thought, gee, well, things get tough when this loan uh, corrects, which is typically a two to three year you know, teaser and then they correct. I can always sell my home, right? Because look at how they're selling like hotcakes or I can refinance, look at how easy this loan process was. 
and both of those were um, were taken away. Here's a look at originations by type, kind of showing the same uh, same info. I want you to see the big uptick, uh, that yellow uptick um, in FHA VA. I want you to see the big uptake in conforming loans. That's the Fannie, uh, Fannie Freddie uh, part of the market. The big dive in jumbos and the big dive in subprime. And that's the kind of a landscape of the real estate financing uh, market that we're facing today. So what happened to the buyers that bought kind of on a wing and a prayer in 04, 03, 05 is in 06 and 07, they started to receive these adjustments. And some of them were um, not anywhere near the low level that they expected. They were, they were big and they were perhaps in a situation where they couldn't afford it. And so they became um, uh, subject to um, not being able to pay their mortgage. So you see kind of the subprime past due uh, starting to come up in California uh, at the end of 2005 and then just really skyrocket, at, skyrocket after that. And then the conventional um, subprime market was impacted partly because you also had kind of good credit households also kind of risking a lot and maybe getting in over um, over their heads. But in addition, as housing prices started to soften, these individuals found themselves underwater as well. I had a, a mortgage broker come up to me at the end of last year and say something that has really stayed with me. She said, you know, Leslie, I've looked and I've looked and I can't find that clause in the documentation that says if the value of the home goes down, I don't have to pay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not there. Okay. Um, so where are we now with um, with NODs? The most recent uh, data that we have available, and again, the foreclosure radar is a much better uh, local source. Uh, but statewide, in the first quarter, we had over 135,000. Uh, on a year-over-year -year basis, it was up only 19%. So we kind of had a little bit of a, a leveling off, and then we're going to see um, we're going to see what I would call this second wave of foreclosures. I've gotten a lot of people calling, and I've made a call a lot of people as well, asking, is there really a second wave? Are lenders holding back uh, this inventory? Why are they doing that? What's what's happening? And I don't have um, a great answer. One of the um, uh, data points um, that was uh, published by Sean O'Toole, who's the head of foreclosure radar, is he essentially took the number of properties going into foreclosure and looked at the number of distressed sales on the MLS and found a huge gap. And I unfortunately can't remember the number off the top of my head, but it was, it was um, is significant. Other issues have been maybe the lenders don't want to realize those losses right now and then they're in the market trying to raise capital. Uh, other issue, not staffed up. You know, you've got one guy with, you know, 400 files on his desk, can't get back, uh, can't get back to people. Um, you know, there's just a, a lot of things going on, but my, um, my take is we are going to see an acceleration in foreclosures in the third quarter and definitely in the fourth quarter um, of this year. And so it could be a little bit of a double whammy for prices, even at the low end, uh, low end a little bit as we kind of absorb those, uh, those units. Here's a look at the foreclosure rate um, and uh, 5.2 and the de delinquency rate. So this really has, has started to work its way through the system, but we're not through yet. Um, how long is this going to last? Well, I think the big, uh, the big question mark is really the economy. <laughs> how long and how deep is this recession going to be? And as I indicated earlier, I don't know how much more the government can do. And I, in fact, could make the argument that they've already done too much <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, deficit, uh, deficit spending. Um, the other issue are the homeowners that are out there today with the uh, all days and the option arms, which tended to be fixed for five years, and then they would adjust. And so what happens in 2010, when most of those start to adjust, and they're looking at being underwater? You know, how are they going to, um, how are they going to behave? Um, we're through most of the sub, uh, subprime in the next 24 months. Um, uh, only 5% left to, uh, to reset, but uh, for all days, that's the alternative document documentation that includes the, um, the liar loans, the stated income, uh, those types of instruments.